Before you watch this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Social Media Management TV and do not forget to press the notification button and to get more information. Good day everyone and a happy new year. Here is Aussie News. Indonesia will turn away stricken boat of Rohingya refugees. Officials told Reuters that Indonesian authorities will help repair a stranded boat packed with Rohingya off its coast, but will not allow its passengers to seek refuge in the Southeast Asian country and will turn the vessel away. Fishermen first spotted the skiff adrift off the coast of Birayuen, a district on the western island of Sumatra with around 120 men, women and children on board. Badruddin Yunus, a local fishing community leader, says the refugees had been at sea for 28 days and some of them had fallen ill and one had died. Indonesia is not a signatory to the 1951 United Nations Convention on Refugees and is predominantly seen as a transit country for those seeking asylum to a third country. Rohingya Muslim refugees from Myanmar have for years sailed to countries such as Malaysia, Thailand and Indonesia between November and April when the seas are calm. Local residents bring aid to Rohingya refugees' boat stranded at Indonesia Sea. Local residents of a coastal Indonesian town delivered supplies and food to a boat of over 100 Rohingya refugees stranded at sea. Fishermen first spotted the skiff adrift off the coast of Birayuen, a district on the western island of Sumatra with around 120 men, women and children on board. Indonesian authorities have said they will help repair the boat but will not allow its passengers to seek refuge in the Southeast Asian country and will turn the vessel away. According to the fishermen who filmed the video, the aid delivery, which was donated by the local Birewen government, contained drinking water, clothing, instant meals, rice and biscuits. The United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees in a statement says that the boat had suffered the engine damage and should be allowed to land. More than 730,000 Rohingya fled Myanmar in August 2017 after a military crackdown that refugees said included mass killings and rape. Rights groups have documented killings of civilians and burning of Rohingya villages. Victims who took refuge in the Typhoon Center area expressed fears of contagion of COVID-19. The government disaster agency says at least 389 people died with 6-4 missing from Typhoon Ray, the 15th and most powerful to have hit the country. Hundreds of families are now staying at the evacuation centers and hundreds of others took refuge in the school turned shelter during the height of the typhoon. There are 16 families staying in one room alone. Most of the evacuees don't wear masks and there's no social distancing. Health experts warn that temporary shelters might turn into COVID-19 hotspots, especially with the highly transmissible Omicron variant. Proper hygiene is hard to maintain inside the shelters because there's limited supply of water. The health department admits their main power and resources were severely affected by the typhoon, but they appealed to the evacuees to observe the health protocols. Only 40% of the population in Bohol has been fully vaccinated. The local health department says that the vaccination rate will help blunt the spread of the coronavirus. Typhoon survivors struggle to rebuild lives after disaster.
Many survivors from Typhoon Ray, which battered the Philippines, are struggling to rebuild their lives at a time when the coronavirus is ravaging the country. Typhoon Ray left a trail of destruction and knocked out power, telecommunications and water supplies. At least 375 people have been killed and affected millions in the central and southern Philippines and parts of the main Luzon island. Residents in Bohol province, one of the hard-to-hit provinces of Typhoon Ray, says the disaster came at a time when many of them are already living below the poverty line. The National Disaster Agency says the estimated damage to agriculture and infrastructure has reached over 4 billion pesos and also damaged nearly 350,000 houses. However, despite the tragedy that befell the province, people there still have hope to get their life back to normal. Japan agrees to launch military hotline with China by the end of 2022. Japan's government spokesperson says Japan's defense minister Nobuo Kishi agreed to launch a military hotline with China this year, citing recent talks between Kishi and his Chinese counterpart. Chief Cabinet Secretary Hirokazu Matsuno at a news conference in Tokyo says Kishi holds a video call with Wei Fenghe, where the Japanese defense chief stresses the importance of stability in the Taiwan Strait. Matsuno says a military hotline between the Japanese and Chinese defense authorities has been agreed and we aim to launch the operation by the end of this year. Japan hopes tension between China and Taiwan will be resolved peacefully through dialogue and his ministry will keep an eye on the widening military imbalance between Beijing and Taipei. China are the United States to act responsibly in space. Chinese Foreign Ministry says the United States ignored obligations under outer space treaties exposing astronauts to danger. Chinese citizens lashes out online against Tesla founder Elon Musk's space ambitions after China complained that its space station was forced to take evasive action to avoid collision with satellites launched by Musk's Starlink program. According to a document submitted by China earlier to the United Nations Space Agency that the satellites from Starlink Internet Services, a division of Musk SpaceX aerospace company, had two close encounters with the Chinese space station on July 1st and October 21st. Zhao Lizian, a spokesperson at the Foreign Ministry, say at a regular news conference in Beijing, China urges the United States to act responsibly. China Xi'an expands COVID-19 testing amid rising cases. State media reports, authorities in China's northwest city of Xi'an says they have expanded COVID-19 testing for residents across the city of 13 million that is currently undergoing lockdown amid a rapid rise in infections. Official data shows Xi'an reported 175 symptomatic cases up from the previous days of 150. No Omicron infections have been announced yet from the 810 confirmed cases in Xi'an from December 9. China has reported only a handful of Omicron infections among international travelers and in its south. Xi'an entered its sixth day of lockdown. Officials have restricted permission for Xi'an residents to go out for necessary shopping during a new round of mass testing and banned non-essential vehicles from entering roads. According to the statement by the National Health Commission, mainland China detected 182 local symptomatic cases compared to it 162 a day earlier and marks a fourth consecutive day of increase. China plans probing asteroid other planets in future. Wu Yanhua, deputy director of China National Space Administration, says China is planning to explore an asteroid and some other planets in the universe in future. On the basis of the successful launch of the Tianwen-1 space exploration mission in 2020. 
He said the planetary exploration project is scheduled to be completed in the next 10 to 15 years. In addition, China is still evaluating long-term development strategy for space exploration, such as exploration of the edge of the solar system. Tianan-1 is an interplanetary mission by the China National Space Administration to send a robotic spacecraft to Mars consisting of five parts, an orbiter, deployable camera, lander, drop camera, and Zurong rover. The mission was launched from the Wenchang spacecraft launch site in South China's Hainan province on July 23, 2020. On a long march, five heavy lift launched vehicle. After seven months of transit through the inner solar system, the spacecraft entered Martian orbit on February 10, 2021 for the next three months. The probe studied the target landing sites from a reconnaissance orbit. On May 14, 2021, the lander rover portion of the mission successfully touched down on Mars, making China the third nation to both land softly on established communication from the Martian surface after the former Soviet Union and the United States. Well, that's the whole news for today. Enjoy your new year, stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you again.